All right, before we move on from the White House and the legislative branch to the judicial branch, I wanted to read one last book for you guys and highlight one last group of people that made the White House possible. When Michelle Obama was living in the White House, when um, President Obama was still in office, she made some comments about the fact that slaves built the White House. And I'm not sure if a lot of people realized that before she made those comments, but this is a great book that helps to highlight that. And I'd like to read this for you. And while I'm reading it, I want you to think about the things that the slaves went through and think about what we should do now as we think back on that time. This is called Brick by Brick by Charles R. Smith Jr illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Under a hazy, hot summer sun, many hands work, together as one. The president of a new country needs a new home, so many hands work, together as one. Black hands, white hands, free hands, slave hands. Slave hands dig, saw, and break stone, laying the foundation for the president's home. Rented his property, slave hands labor, as diggers of stone, sawyers, and bricklayers. Diggers swing axes to break up stone, laying the foundation for the president's home. Jerry, Jess, Charles, Len, Dick, Bill, Harry, Jim. Slave hands swing axes, 12 hours a day, but slave owners take slave hands pay. Slave hands sweat under a bright sun, slave hands toil until each day is done. Chiseling, carving, and transporting stone, slave hands ache, dark skin to white bone. Slave hands blister under a bright hazy sun, slave hands toil until each day is done. Sawyer saw blades through logs of oak wood, seven days a week where a forest once stood. Alec, Ben, William, Moses, Simon, Peter, Frank, Thomas. Up, down, push, pull, two men per pit saw, spraying sawdust until slave hands are raw. Slave hands saw 12 hours a day, but slave owners take slave hands pay. Slave hands bleed under a hot, hazy sun. Slave hands toil until each day is done. Clay, sand, and water is mixed by young slave hands to create bricks. Nameless, faceless, daughters and sons build brick by brick until each day is done. Oyster shells mixed with rock, lime, and sand become mortar for bricks spread by slave hands. Will, Nace, Gerard, Manuel, Liverpool, Lester, Herbert, Samuel. Slave hands spread mortar 12 hours a day, but slave owners take slave hands pay. Slave hands crack under a hot, hazy sun. Slave hands toil until each day is done. Slave hands learn new trade skills using chisels, saws, hammers, and drills. Slave hands earn one shilling per day reaching slave hands closer to freedom with pay. Brick by brick, slave hands build. Day by day, slave hands gain skill. Month by month, slave hands toil, planting seeds of freedom in fertile soil. Freedom has a price in a land of liberty, so slave hands toil to no longer be property. Brick by brick, where a forest once stood, grows the president's home made of stone and oak wood. Slave hands build and slave hands save, shillings to be free and no longer a slave. Slave hands count shillings with worn fingertips and purchase freedom earned brick by brick. So the author has a note here answering the question, why were slaves used to build the White House? Today we know that the White House exists in the big city of Washington, D.C., but when construction began in 1792, it was in the middle of nowhere. 
manpower was needed to clear the forest, build the house, and make all the fine details inside. Lots of manpower. Local workers, including immigrants from Scotland and other countries, were hired, as well as free blacks. But it wasn't enough. That's where slaves came in. After realizing there weren't enough workers in the population to assist in construction, the government looked to slaves to round out the workforce. Slave owners from Virginia and Maryland received $5 a month to rent out each slave. After a hard day of work, slaves returned to a small shared hut and ate from the rations of pork, beef, and cornmeal provided to them. Slaves endured a snake-infested island and mosquito swarms to dig up the stones needed for the walls of the house. They endured hour after hour of cutting and trimming wood, often until their hands were bloodied or deformed. The work was hard on the body, especially the hands. I chose to focus on the hands because all of the work was done at a time when machines didn't exist to do those same jobs. Hand is also another name for a laborer or worker. Thus, many slaves were needed to turn a wooded forest into our country's most famous address. As the house began to be completed on the outside, skilled workers were needed to finish the inside. Skilled craftsmen from other countries taught the slaves trades such as cabinet making and carpentry. These skills allowed the slaves a chance to earn money and eventually pay for their freedom. Unfortunately, the original White House was burned down by the British on the night of August 24, 1814, during the most dramatic episode of the War of 1812. It was later rebuilt and restored to its original condition and stands as a reminder of the contribution made by slaves who worked towards freedom, brick by brick. And at the bottom, it shows a couple of different places where you can find out more information about slaves building the White House. Now, in addition to the White House, there are lots of buildings that are still around and very famous in our country that were built by the hands of slaves. They include Wall Street in New York City, our Capitol building, again, the White House, the Freedom Statue at the top of the Capitol building, which was totally made possible by the hands of one particular slave who became a skilled craftsman. Mount Vernon, where Washington lived in Virginia, and the Smithsonian Institute Castle in Washington, D.C. In addition to buildings that were built by slave hands, there are also a lot of buildings in our country that are made possible because money was given by people who owned slaves and made lots of money because of their slaves. And that includes Fennel Hall in Boston and Harvard University up in Massachusetts. Both of those are things, but those are, are just two very famous ones. There are lots of other places that have a background in slavery. And it's not just African Americans who were slaves that helped build things. This particular building is the Castillo de San Marcos Fort in Florida. And it was built by um, Native Americans who were enslaved by Spanish people who had colonies in Florida at the time. So that's just another spot. As we're realizing that some of our famous landmarks and some important places in history are um, have a background in slavery, there are a lot of places that are starting to do things like make memorials to the slaves to honor the slaves that helped build those places. And this right here shows a memorial to the slaves that helped construct the Capitol building. And that's inside the Capitol building is that little memorial. So today, what I want you to think about, do you think that we should do anything at these places to remember or honor the slaves that built the buildings? Tell me why or why not. And then finally, what are some ideas that you have that we could do to, to honor those slaves? Some places do things like, um, if it's a college, sometimes they can find the people who 
are descendants or great, 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 great grandchildren of those slaves. And they are able to um, give them an education and things like that. So, and then other places are, are putting plaques or special memorials there. What do you think? Are those things enough? Or do you think that there's something else we should be doing to help honor the slaves that were part of building the White House and other important buildings in our history?